All righty, very good. Okay, so let's go ahead and just kind of get started. Um, and again, if you have any questions, feel free to just kind of add it in the chat or feel free to speak into the mic, that's okay as well. Um, Lily and I will both just kind of be checking the chat and checking for any hands raised. Um, and so I do want to just kind of get started here. So welcome to our computer science orientation session for our first year students. Um, this is, I believe, the only online session. So um, again, if you weren't able to make it these last couple of days, then this is the right session for you. And again, you'll be getting this information as a PDF uh, through email. So let's just go ahead and get started here. So my name is Vanessa Lopez. I am the academic advisor for the computer science program, specifically uh, for the traditional program. We do have a C++ cohort um, and they're kind of facilitated and coordinated with um, our faculty member Utsab, as well as with Mindy Sanchez. She is the coordinator for the program. Um, and we do have a computer science online program and that is facilitated by Kayla Rolacek. Um, and so uh, for our computer science on campus program, um, I am the only advisor that you will be meeting with throughout your time here um, at CSUMB. Um, this is Dr. Budsu. She is the department chair of the School of Computing and Design. She is also an instructor and professor that you will be having um, probably within your junior, senior year. She does teach some of the upper division courses and she's been with uh, CSUMB for about 16 years. Um, and so she's really molded and developed the program throughout her time here. Um, and I'm excited to have you. She's absolutely great. Um, and she will be working with you in your future. All right, so today's agenda, we're gonna be reviewing some of the major learning outcomes for the program. So what you're gonna be learning throughout your time here at CSUMB. Um, we're gonna be reviewing the computer science curriculum. So you'll be seeing just kind of the different levels of classes that you'll be taking here um, at Cal State Monterey Bay, uh, as well as some other academic requirements and university requirements that you need to accomplish um, in order to get your bachelor's degree with us. We're also going to showcase how to access your dashboard, which um, has the capability to allow you to get into your Gmail suite, as well as some other important applications that you'll be needing access to, uh, to be successful here at CSUMB. And we'll also showcase a demonstration of how to add classes to your shopping cart and how to register into the appropriate classes for your fall semester and moving forward. All right, so the major learning outcomes here. So we're mainly going to focus in these top three sections here. Um, as a first year student, sophomore, sophomore student, you're going to be focusing in on problem solving and computational thinking. Uh, so a lot of you are probably just naturally pretty curious, which is an important um, just kind of value to have as a computer science student and professional. Um, our folks and students in computer science are naturally always just trying to solve problems. Um, and so within your first year for, or at least your sophomore semester, you will be enrolling into uh, your very foundational programming class. And that's our uh, CST 231 course. And that will be taught in Java programming. Um, so some of you may have experienced or learned some coding in the past or maybe in high school, maybe just kind of tinkering through YouTube. Um, and so you might be a little bit familiar with programming, which is wonderful. Uh, for us here at CSUMB, we do focus more so on the Java side. Uh, and so you'll be learning that CST 231 course in your sophomore year. Again, very relevant to problem solving computational thinking. Uh, the second major learning outcome is professional communication. So throughout your time and throughout some of the classes that you'll be having here at CSUMB, you're going to be involved with group projects as well as facilitating presentations in front of your peers, um, in front of professional um, employers that are coming from the industry. Um, and so they'll be kind of listening to how you express yourself, um, how you present. And those are just kind of great opportunities for you to evolve and um, develop your, your communication skills because it's super important when you are starting to apply for internships and practice for your interviews that you know how to express yourself when you're talking about why you're using certain code to solve some of the problems that are given to you during those interviews as you will be doing um, a whiteboard um, problem solving. Um, and so it's important for you to develop your, your oral communication skills. Um, another uh, focus here is the professional ethos. Um, just because within computer science, it's super important to um, just kind of 
know how to present yourself ethically. Uh, we do have a concentration that is relevant to the network and security side. And so uh, you will have to know how to um, just kind of prepare and make sure that you maintain um, systems and, and the network in an ethical manner um, and make sure that you just kind of stop intruders, right, from breaking into the system um, or hacking, as you can say, and you'll be learning some ethical hacking tools to, to try to eliminate unethical hacking. So these are the top three uh, major learning outcomes that you will be focusing in on throughout your time here. And as you become a junior and senior, you will then focus in on some core classes needed for um, your core programs, such as algorithms and operating systems. And then once you declare a concentration, uh, you'll be learning a little bit more specialized information and knowledge uh, within those specific areas. So five, uh, major learning outcomes that you'll be developing here and we're hoping that you attain um, before you graduate from CSUMB. Uh, so these are the different levels of our computer science curriculum. You'll mainly be focusing in on these areas here as the foundation um, as a first year student. So again, there's that CST 231 class that you're gonna be taking in your sophomore year. Um, that is, again, that Java course that you'll mainly be focusing in on, as well as some of these math classes. Um, math 170 is our discrete mathematics, and the prerequisite to all of these classes here is pre-calculus. So some of you might have completed pre-calculus in high school, which is absolutely wonderful, or some of you have done the AP class or maybe dual enrollment um, credit, and so some of you have completed pre-calculus, um, and then thereafter, uh, students will be delving into discrete mathematics, calculus one, and then math 270. Beside these math classes, um, you'll be also just kind of getting into within your junior year, um, our major pro seminar class, um, software, uh, or so software design, and then this is the algorithms course, so, uh, CST 370, and then our operating system. So some core classes that all students, regardless of concentration, will be jumping into. Um, and then thereafter, students can break into different concentrations. So we have four um, as a traditional program. We have software engineering, network and security, game development, and data science. And each one requires students to complete three classes. Some of these classes are kind of shared within each other. So you can see this 325 class is shared within software engineering. Um, you can see that our 383 class is shared within data science over here. So there are some shared courses um, and there are some concentrations that don't share anything such as the network and security uh, program. So we're not asking students to necessarily declare a concentration right away um, because we know that students won't know exactly what area or pathway to take, um, not until they start taking some of the core classes. They'll develop a better understanding of what each pathway um, can um, get you into career-wise. But usually students will start to formalize and identify which pathway they want to jump into within their junior year. So junior year is kind of when you wanna start declaring a pathway um, so we can give you the appropriate course recommendations within that time. For now, no need to declare if you don't know uh, which pathway you wanna get into, that's completely fine. Um, junior year though, we should meet to, to just kind of talk about which, which area you wanna um, be an expert in. Beside the concentrations, we have our students uh, complete 12 units of computer science electives. So these are all the various options that you can choose from. And you can see some similarities as a lot of these classes are naturally in the concentrations. And this just kind of gives you the opportunity to explore another concentration area um, in case you have an interest in two areas. So if you have an interest in software engineering but wanna take some of the network security classes, that's totally fine. We can use the network security classes to count towards your elective requirement here. Beside the electives, students will also have to do a CST 462S class, which is the race gender class in the digital world. And this class is super unique because the S right here represents service learning. And what that means is that students will have to um, volunteer some of their time uh, to a local nonprofit um, relevant to computer science. So it's a great way for you to gain hands-on experience within computer science. 
um, and it's a good resume builder. So you can list that experience on your resume, which might be something that uh, your internship or your employer is interested in learning more about. So CST 462S, that's a class that you won't necessarily take now. It'll be in your senior year. Along with this capstone class, CST 499 capstone, this is a super important class. And this is where you get to demonstrate um, all the skills and knowledge that you've learned here at CSUMB because you will be uh, partnered with um, some of your peers and you will be creating some type of project, again, for a local nonprofit or a business um, relevant to computer science. And you just can kind of demonstrate in front of your classmates, in front of your, your um, instructors, the business and any family members that you choose to invite to the festival, um, you can demonstrate exactly what your findings are within your research project. So again, another great class uh, for you to showcase all the great things that you've learned here at CSUMB within this last course in your senior year. So again, these are the four different levels um, that uh, you'll be just kind of getting exposed to within computer science and the requirements that you will be accomplishing um, in order to get your bachelor's degree with us. I do wanna just give a brief overview of CSUMB overall. Um, and so we operate within a 16 week semester and we offer classes predominantly in a fall semester and spring semester. So we are semester and we only require students to absolutely take classes in fall and spring. However, we do offer a winter and a summer session. However, these sessions here are shortened. So you can see that they're only four to six weeks um, and it is optional. So you're not necessarily required to take classes within the winter or summer session. And I mainly recommend students to take classes within those sessions only if they are falling behind in academics. So if they have failed a math class or failed some GE classes and need to retake classes, then I would absolutely encourage students to take um, courses during the winter and summer if they need to catch up. Um, but again, it's completely optional if you choose not to take classes in the winter or summer. Winter is usually offered uh, within early January and, and sometime February. Summer starts in June and it could end sometime in July or maybe even sometimes in, in August. Um, fall and spring, those are the session or fall, at least you're gonna be starting this upcoming August and it ends um, mid-December and then spring semester will start sometime in late January and then end in May. So those are the, that's how we operate in terms of courses here. Um, and we do have three different uh, course offerings. Uh, for our computer science uh, courses, they're only gonna be offered on campus for this upcoming fall semester. A lot of us are used to the online platform, um, but what we have found is that most of our students were most successful or got the most knowledge out of the classes when they were taught on campus. So we had higher outcomes and better performance for classes that were taught in person, uh, which is why a lot of our computer science classes will be taught in person for fall and moving forward. However, you might come across some online or hybrid options when it comes to uh, general education classes. Um, and so some of your classes might be taught asynchronously um, or synchronously. Asynchronous means that the classes will be just kind of totally in your control. You don't have to log in at a certain time with your classmates. You can just kind of complete assignments um, on your own time as needed, um, dependent on the deadlines on the syllabus. Synchronous means that everyone's taking classes together at the same time. So you have to log in at a certain time in order to, to attain, attend the class. And then there are hybrid classes, meaning that at some points you'll have to come in person to classes while the other portion of it, whether it be the lecture or the lab, you'll be able to complete it online. And we'll take a look to see what this looks like on your um, actual schedule once we get into the uh, course schedule or the registration process. But just kind of want to make you aware that those are how they're being offered this semester. All right, so here we have a bunch of general education, just kind of different requirements here. We have areas A all the way down to area F. Um, and I do just kind of want to pinpoint here that all the areas that have a little asterisks here. Um, so it's the oral communication, written communication, critical thinking, and the math. Um, those areas have to be passed with a C minus or better to be considered passing. 
And this is not only a rule here at CSUMB, but this is also a rule at the community colleges, as well as this, the UC school system. This is known as the golden four. And so all areas A1 through A3, including the mathematics before area, those classes have to be passed with a C minus. All the other areas that are not within the golden four, such as the arts, social sciences, E and F, those classes can be passed with a D um, in order to be counted as passing. Um, in, in general rule though, we do want our students to at least earn a C in all classes because in order to graduate from CSUMB, students need to earn a, a minimum GPA of a 2.0. Um, so to attain a 2.0 GPA, that's relative to earning a C uh, for all classes. A D will definitely bring down GPA. Um, and it doesn't necessarily look good if you're trying to apply for internships, because um, sometimes um, the, the intern groups or the employers will be looking at GPA to see um, what it looks like in terms of trying to figure out who to hire for their internships. Um, as well as master's programs, they also look at GPA. So if you have an interest in applying for master's programs after you get your bachelor's degree, um, they're looking for a relatively high GPA. So um, trying to get C or better, I think that's the golden rule and something that we should all strive for. Um, I do wanna highlight two specific areas here. We have the A2 written communication and there's various classes that um, are offered to attain or complete this requirement here, um, but it's gonna be dependent on your DSP placement. Um, and that's the directed self-placement that a lot of you should have gotten an email about. Um, and so if you haven't completed the directed self-placement on Canvas, that's something that you wanna complete later this week or on the weekend, um, because it's gonna tell you which writing class you should register for. It's gonna either say take HCOM 120, 120 or 125, or for some of you, it might suggest to take CAD 101A for this fall semester or CAD 102. So if you haven't completed directed self-placement, please do so at your earliest convenience. Same thing for this math class here. Um, students can take the DSP to see which math class that they should take. It might suggest that you take a support class with it or it might say just to take math 130. Um, again, it's relative to your results on the directed self-placement. For any folks that are part of C++, um, no need to worry about taking the DSP placement just because I believe the coordinators will be automatically registering you into whatever math class and whatever writing class they want you to jump into. Okay, so again, C++ folks that are in this section, don't worry about DSP just because you are gonna be automatically registered into classes that the cohort program wants you to register for. Um, but for everyone else, please do the DSP placement um, if you can. There is also another way that you can skip pre-calculus for my traditional students. Um, and that is by taking the Alex placement um, test and, or exam, I guess we can say. And I'm gonna email you that link. Um, and so for folks that have done pre-calculus in high school and you want to skip pre-calculus here at CSUMB, you can. You just have to take the Alex placement test and earn a score of 75 or higher. If you earn a score of 75 or higher, uh, what you can do is take a screenshot of that score, send it to me, and then I will recommend probably another math class, whether it be discrete mathematics or calculus one. Um, again, I'm gonna send you that email information after the session, um, but just know that if you've taken pre-calculus already and you feel like you're ready for a more advanced math class, um, take the Alex placement exam and, and try to get a 75 or higher, okay? Some of you folks might not have to take some of these requirements. If you have some of the AP credit or IB credit completed, or some of you have done some college level coursework through dual enrollment, which is wonderful, um, I do want to show that if you, let's click on the AP credit here, if you go onto our website and then um, if you use the search feature here and type in credit by exam, it should bring you to a link right here, which will show you the different just kind of testing features that we accept. We accept AP, CLEP and IB credit. Um, and then if you click on AP, you can see all the various subjects that we accept and what type of score you need in order to opt out of that specific area. So some of you might've completed AP Calculus AB, 
And if you got a three in that specific subject, um, that is equivalent to our Math 130. So you can totally just kind of skip out of Math 130 if you got a three. If you took that subject and you got a four, then uh, you can totally equate that to Calculus 1. Um, so you wouldn't, you wouldn't have to do Calculus 1 here with us. So again, if you type in credit by exam in this specific box up top, you can see all the different subjects that we accept. Um, and so again, if you have AP credit and you're waiting for those scores to come through from College Board, because I know a lot of the scores won't be posted until um, July time, you want, the, you want to send the scores to our admissions department. Um, and it says here, if sending scores by mail, you can address it to the Office of Admissions, and this is the address that you can send the scores to. Um, if you have already sent scores to us, then just kind of be patient. Our admissions folks are um, trying to evaluate all the scores and transcripts as best as possible, as quickly as possible, and as accurately as possible. Um, and so they're just probably taking some time before they post their credit on your account. Um, any questions about the AP stuff or dual enrollment stuff thus far? And you can add it to the chat. Um, you can speak into the mic. No chat, okay. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and move on, but if you have a question, feel free to add it to the chat so we can all learn from it. All right, so now we have um, some upper division general education requirements that students will also have to complete once you are a junior or senior. We're not gonna spend too much time here, but just know that there's an area B, C, and D. So after you complete all the areas A through F, there are three more requirements that you will have to complete as a junior or a senior. Um, and we do have some course recommendations to complete those areas. I do just kind of want to highlight area C because um, Japanese 350 and Spanish 350 are recommended to clear out this area because those two classes also satisfy the language requirement. Um, and so the language requirement is across the board, all students have to complete a language course in order to graduate from CSUMB. Um, and so well, let me get into the next slide to just kind of demonstrate what that requirement is. Um, and I apologize, I am looking at the chat here and it's asking if an AP IB class isn't listed there, is it not eligible for credit? And that is correct. If the subject is not listed um, on the AP or IB area, then we don't accept that specific subject. Um, but if you have any further questions about that subject, you probably want to contact admissions just to kind of verify, um, because who knows, what if the website hasn't been updated? So I would contact admissions at csumb.edu. All right, so when it comes back to the university requirements here, these are just kind of the various areas that you'll have to complete beside the computer science classes, beside the general education classes that we just talked about. Um, everyone is gonna have to complete a first year seminar class. And that is our FYS 145 course, the digital media art and culture. And there is a specific couple sections that I want you all to register into, which we'll talk about in the next couple slides. Um, but just know that everyone in order to graduate, you have to complete FYS 145. Students will also have to complete a US history class here at CSUMB in addition to a political science service learning class. Um, again, this service learning component that requires you to complete, uh, I believe 30 hours of volunteer work um, within um, the local community and just kind of be part of civic engagement. Um, so again, before you graduate, you have to do a US-1 and a US-2-3 requirement to complete American institutions. And that's set forth by the Cal State system. Going back to the world language and culture requirement, again, in order to graduate from CSUMB, everyone has to complete one level of a world language and culture course. Um, if you have AP credit or if you took uh, a college level course, then that completely satisfies this requirement and you don't have to take another one here with us at CSUMB. Of course, the grade has to be passing or the score has to be enough in order to clear out this requirement. But if you have not completed a language course or a culture requirement, um, don't worry, we will be planning Japanese 350 or Spanish 350 into your uh, learning plan. 
Um, and these classes are very culture-based, so you're not necessarily learning the language in its entirety. Um, there's no prerequisite for these classes other than being a junior or a senior, um, so something that you'll probably be uh, taking within your junior, senior year. But for now, just kind of want you to be aware that at some point, you're going to be taking a language course um, in order to graduate. Beside that, we do have our graduate writing and assessment class, um, CST 300. That's something that you'll be taking your junior year. Um, and that class is going to give you exposure to uh, the different concentrations as um, industry guest speakers will be coming to that class and presenting on the world of work within the different concentrations and just kind of their experience. So you'll be gaining a better understanding of the concentrations within that class. And then we just talked about the 462S class um, not too long ago. So I just kind of want to skip that. Um, just because we're getting close to time here. Um, I do want you to just kind of take a picture of this uh, slide here, because these are the classes that you will be registering into for this fall semester. Um, again, this is only relative to traditional students. C++ students, don't worry about it. You're automatically registered for courses. But for any traditional student, take a picture of this, just because you're going to be registering into FYS 145 either section 42320, or if that class gets full, register into 42639. And I'll show you how to register into those two in just a moment. You're also gonna register into CST 286, Physics of Computing. And then dependent on your directed self-placement results, you're gonna register into Math 130 Pre-Calculus, or if you pass the Alex placement exam, I might recommend a different math class, but for now, everyone just add the Math 130 pre-calculus course um, into your shopping cart. And then again, dependent on the directed self-placement results for your writing component, everyone's gonna register into HCOM 125, or um, you can, if that class gets full, um, you can register into a speech-based class. Um, and so again, some of you might have to get into the CAD class, just depends on your DSP uh, results. So this should total out to about 15 units, which is considered full time. Um, the minimum needed to be full time is 12 units. Um, and so if folks are planning to live on campus, you do have to be enrolled at a minimum of 12 units in order to live on campus. Um, and so 15 is generally recommended for students um, because we found that 15 to 16 units every semester um, and having students pass the 15 to 16 units every semester, that will get you on a pathway to graduate within a four year time span. Okay. Um, and so folks that uh, are also planning to get financial aid through FAFSA or have applied for FAFSA, um, 15 units is pretty good um, in order to get the most aid out of FAFSA. Um, and so if you can just kind of keep that just kind of in your brain there, um, try to get into 15 units at some points if you feel like that's too much then you can drop a class um, and just stay within the 12 unit range. Uh, we essentially just want you to be registered into something that you feel will be um, successful for you. We don't wanna overpack too many classes. Again, this is your first semester um, at CSUMB. And so it's gonna take a little bit for you to transition and get used to the structure here at CSUMB, especially in computer science. So if you need to be in 12 units, um, or less, then I highly recommend that we discuss it and we talk about it because um, we want you to be on a pathway to be successful for what's right for you. All right, any questions about the fall 2022 course recommendations? And I'll just pause here for a little bit to see if anyone wants to add something to the chat or if anyone wants to ask something. Feel free to open up your mic. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and move on. All right, folks, so for directed self-placement, a lot of you should have gotten an email. Um, and then asking you to just kind of log in to add yourself to this Canvas page. It's the right to register page. Um, and so some of you might have to backtrack in your email to find uh, the specific information. But if you go ahead and just kind of click on the Canvas page, you can always 
just kind of register yourself into the Canvas page. Canvas is what we use at CSUMB um, for students to submit assignments, to um, sometimes watch lectures or take exams or tests. Um, and Canvas is the learning management system, again, that you'll be using throughout your time here at CSUMB. And so getting exposure to this system is gonna be important um, as you have to complete right to register. So if you click on the first module here or the link, um, it's gonna show you and give you some information on what you need to do to complete this um, module. So it looks like you have to watch some video tutorials here. Um, and then if you scroll down, it's gonna ask you to select next. So again, um, add yourself to this Canvas right to register module uh, for directed self-placement and complete that when you get an opportunity to do so. Um, and also do it for the math component as well. Um, let's get back into the presentation here. All right, so there are four different pathways that I will be emailing you as well. Um, these are just good general guidelines. So I'm gonna click on the first one for data science. We do also have a game development network security software engineering pathway that we talked about formerly. But if I click on the data science pathway here, it's gonna give you general guidelines on what classes you should be adding to your shopping cart or registering into every semester. Um, so again, um, this is just general guidelines. This is not relevant or accurate to you um, just because some of you might be coming in and transferring in with AP credit as well as dual enrollment credit. So some of these GEs won't be relevant to you. Um, and some of these math classes might not be relevant to you. Um, but this is just kind of a good pathway to follow to make sure that you're completing all requirements needed to graduate within the four years. Um, so you can use this as a good guide, um, but I highly and, and stress that you should meet with me to create a learning plan that is specific to you, um, dependent on what pathway you want to jump into in terms of concentration. And if you have any AP stuff, we want to make sure that we schedule around those AP credit subject areas. Um, so you don't register into something that you should have gotten credit for. Uh, but overall, this is kind of like a safe bet to, to follow. And again, I'm going to email you those pathways um, after this session here. All right, CSUMB dashboard. So this is the dashboard that you should all just kind of be familiar with um, because it has your Google Apps Mail um, link there. So if you haven't activated your Gmail account, definitely take some time this week or maybe on the weekend to click on that link and activate it so you can see what important information you might have missed. Um, there's also a Google Apps Drive. So this is a drive that you're going to be using to um, connect with your classmates, upload just kind of papers or um, any assignments on the drive. It's kind of like a, like, uh, like a USB, but it's virtual. So if you aren't familiar with Google Apps Drive, um, this is a good tool to familiarize yourself with. You have the Google Apps Calendar, um, and this is important because when you book an appointment with me, this is where I'm going to send you a, a Zoom link. Um, all of my appointments for summer will be hosted on Zoom, um, and so I'm going to send you uh, your link to your Google Apps Calendar, so if you can just kind of remember that. Some students, unfortunately, they, they didn't recognize that I sent them a Google Calendar and, and they missed their appointment, so make sure that you just kind of review that. Um, some other information here, you have OASIS. That's a system that you're going to be using to register for classes and uh, something where you can see where your academic requirements are. And we'll be reviewing a tutorial of that shortly. Um, something that's not listed here because I took a picture of this as an employee, but yours should also have a link that says advising appointments. If you click on that advising appointments link, um, that's where you can book an appointment with myself or with the student success advisor. Um, or career advisor. Um, and so if you click on that adv advising appointments link, that's what's gonna help you get connected with myself or another advisor on campus. So let's go ahead and just kind of move forward here to the shopping cart demonstration. Um, let me log in. And this is again, a test site, just to show a demonstration of how to register for classes and just kind of sort through Oasis. Um, so this is Oasis, and this is what you're going to be using to pay for classes. You'll be able to see what your account summary is down below. You can accept or decline financial aid, whatever is offered to you. On the far right over here, this is where you're going to be seeing your enrollment date. So for a lot of you, 
Um, it should be posted as July 14th um, and everyone's gonna have a different time associated to their account. Some of you might be able to register at 8.30 a.m. Some of you, it might say 12 or 2 p.m. So whenever you get a chance to do so, check on your Oasis account to see what day and time is assigned to you. That's super important here. Um, and then when you register for classes, your schedule will show in this specific area. So this is just kind of an account that I'm sharing with a colleague. So this person already registered for classes. We're gonna go ahead and actually delete those classes or drop them um, so we don't get confused on what we're trying to register for. Drop selected and then finish dropping. So then it should remove them all successfully. Um, let's go back to the home page here. Um, so the, the way that we add classes into our shopping cart is we want to start off with enroll. So we see that link there, click enroll. And then we're going to come across this specific area. So one of the classes that I recommended or I want all students to register into is the FYS 145 class. And I did give you a specific five digit number um, that I want students to register into. Um, and with that five digit number, you're going to enter it in this specific box. Um, so that code specifically that I want you all to get into is 42320, okay? So that's the code that I want students to remember um, if you're trying to register into FYS. Because this code is specific to the specific section that I want you to get into, and this class is not published on the schedule. So no other students from other majors can register into this class if they don't know that specific code. Okay, so again, it's not on the schedule, so you're not gonna be able to find it. If you search for it, it's hidden, okay? So again, type in 42320 in that little box, select enter, and then you'll be able to find FYS 145, section three. You can see what it satisfies. It satisfies first year seminar requirement and the C2 humanities, and it's a lower division class. This class is on Mondays and Wednesdays from 10 to 1120 and it's in building 506 um, in room 111. So that's the BIT building and it's with instructor Ryan Eller. Um, so if we just kind of make note of that, we wanna make sure that this is what we want and then we select next. And then there was a question in the chat and that is correct. Yes, if you're part of CS++, no need to register yourself into any classes. Um, you can follow along just because at some points, some C++ students get removed from the program if they don't perform well, or at some point students might drop themselves. Um, so correct, you don't have to just kind of follow along here um, if you don't wish to do so. But for traditional students, you have to pay attention just because you're registering yourself into classes. All right, so that's that FYS 145 class that I want students to register into. Um, the other class that I want students to register into for the fall semester is CST 286. So because I mentioned that it's specifically CST 286, we can search by subject. It's CST. And then in the box, we're going to put the number 286. And then we can see that this class, there's only one section of it. And it's only on Mondays and Wednesdays from 2 to 350. And again, it's in the building 506, which is the BIT building. And it's in room 104. And I can see that it doesn't conflict with my FYS class. So FYS is Monday, Wednesday, 10 to 11.20. And this one's Monday, Wednesday in the afternoon. So we can go ahead and select that. Um, and we can see that the prerequisite is Math 130 or the co-requisite is Math 130. So that means that if I have not completed Math 130 beforehand, with a C minus or better, I'm not gonna be able to register into this class. But it's also saying that it's a co-requisite, meaning that even though I haven't completed pre-calculus, I can still get into this class if I register into pre-calculus at the same time or in the same uh, semester. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna select next. And then my next class I'm gonna add is pre-calculus, so that Math 130. So again, I'm gonna go back to the search feature here. I'm gonna look up the subject math. Oops. And then in the box, I'm gonna type in 130 because that's pre-calculus. 
And then I'm gonna go ahead and try to find one that fits with my shopping cart. So a lot of my classes are Monday, Wednesday. So let's just probably do this one here because it doesn't conflict with any of these times. All right, select next. So then I have my shopping cart here. Um, and then there is one more class that I do want students to register into, and that's an A2 written communication class. Again, it's gonna be very dependent on what your DSP um, placement results are. Um, but if I say register into an A2 class, or if all the A2s get full and I say register into an A1 class, you're gonna have to know how to search for general education classes. So if we select search, um, we're only gonna filter by these two areas here, the course attribute and the value, because I didn't say specifically um, an HCOM class, I didn't say CAD class, I said A2. So we're gonna go to general education. The value, you can see all the different general education requirements that we offer or that we have here at CCMB. And again, we're gonna look for written communication, but if all those are full, then just look for an A1 or an A3. So any of the A's in your first semester are preferred. Um, again, A2 is the number one option here. So let's go ahead and select search. And then we come across all the different classes that will satisfy A2. And I'm probably gonna specifically choose this class here. Let's see if it conflicts with anything. It's a Tuesday from 12 to something. Nope, doesn't conflict with anything. So that class might be okay. And this class is unique because it says that it doesn't have a room number, it's synchronous and it's asynchronous, meaning that this class is online, um, but it looks like at some points I'm gonna have to log in on Tuesdays from 12 to 1.15 p.m. And then the other half of it is gonna be completely online. There's no login time for me to, to be in the course. I'm just gonna click on the class number to see what information it can give me. Um, sometimes it tells you what days and times to log in, but it doesn't specifically say anything other than Tuesdays from 12 to 1.15, I have to log in online. Um, and then the rest of it, again, is gonna be asynchronous. And then you can read a description of what the class will be about in case you want further information. So I'm just gonna go ahead and choose this class because I, let's just say I want to experience the online option. I'm gonna go ahead and select it. And then I'm gonna select next. So here we have a total of nine, 10, 11, 12, 30, 40, 15, 15 units, which is the preferred amount of units for my first semester. Um, and so on your assigned registration date and time, you should be able to select proceed to step two of three. For now, until you have your registration date, the only thing you can do is add classes into your shopping cart. So it's gonna save it in your shopping cart here for you. It's kind of like when you're shopping on Amazon, you add things to a shopping cart, but you haven't checked out yet. That's the same process that we're doing here. It's saved in the shopping cart. Um, and then once your registration date opens up on the 14th of July, you should be eligible to register for classes. So I'm just gonna show you the registration process by selecting proceed to two of three. You're gonna to wanna to check one more time, um, make sure everything looks good to go. And then you just select finish enrolling. And then you can see all the green check marks here, which showcases that the classes were successfully registered into. So then if you go to my class schedule, you'll be able to see that all of these classes were locked in. And then you can select a weekly calendar. And you can see um, all the classes that I selected are, are placed here on a map. Um, it's kind of like a calendar, so you can see where all your loopholes are in case you're trying to schedule work time in there. You can see that you're available after four o'clock or on Thursdays and Fridays, you're completely open in case you do plan to work um, during your academic time. So that's the schedule there, and that's how you add classes into your shopping cart and registration process. Um, any questions about Oasis or anything thus far? I'm gonna pause. You can add it to the chat. Evan, I do see a question here. Should we be enrolling into these classes right now? Um, you can if you wanted to. I'm also gonna show you or send some video tutorials on how to do this process again. Um, but yeah, if you had time to do it right there and then, no, no worries. You can definitely move forward and be proactive on that end. So 
again, FYS, 286, Math 130, if you have not done pre-calculus, and then our writing class, an A2 class. Another thing I do want to show, just because I know some of you are sending your college board scores to us, as well as um, dual enrollment, um, is your transfer credit report, because that is where your official scores will be posted. So if you go to the drop down menu right next to your schedule, and you go to transfer credit report, select the double arrows, it's going to showcase this page here where if you've attended a community college or have dual enrollment credit, it's gonna show the name of the college as well as what credit you transferred over. This scenario or this example doesn't showcase that because this student did not take any dual enrollment credit. And if you have AP credit, it's gonna show it in this area here. It's gonna show test credit. It's gonna give us the subject, what score you got, and then what it equates to or what class it equates to here at CSUMB. So if you do have any credit, it should show in this area. If you have sent your scores, but you don't see it posted here, again, the folks that are gonna be evaluating it is admissions. I don't evaluate those credits or those scores. Um, that would be our admissions department. So if you emailed me and said, hey, I don't see any transfer credit, there's nothing necessarily that I can do. Um, you would have to email admissions um, in order to figure out what's going on on their end. All right, and that's their email, their admissions at csumb.edu. So that's the transfer credit report. There is one more tool that I do want you to be familiar with because it's something that I'm gonna use uh, when helping you create an education plan. And that is your academic requirements report here. So the academic requirements report is kind of like a checklist. It just kind of gives you all the different requirements that you have to complete in order to get your bachelor's degree with us. Um, and it'll show you here um, students, uh, or at least in this example, it says that this student is in communication design. So that's another major that we have here at CCMB and they're pursuing visual design. For you, um, it should say computer science in this area, unless you applied to us with a different major. Some students have changed from marine science or kinesiology to computer science. Um, so hopefully yours says computer science here. If it doesn't, please email me and let me know, that way I can make that adjustment on your um, account. And then once you declare a concentration, whether it be software engineering, game development, network security, or data science, it will show in this area what your concentration is. And if we scroll down here, we'll, we can see what the legend or the icons mean. So green check mark means that it's the area has been satisfied, yellow is in progress, red means that you haven't completed it yet, and then you should be able to see all the different general education requirements listed. And we can already see that some of these are in yellow and that's because we just registered into these classes. So you can make sure that when you're registering for classes that they are satisfying something. Sometimes students that register into just kind of random classes or whatever classes of interest, um, they don't necessarily satisfy these requirements and they won't show that it's satisfying those areas. They'll show, end up showing up all the way on the bottom as electives down here if the course is not satisfying any specific requirements for you. So kind of be cautious on that, that not everything is gonna be helpful for your education experience. It might just be um, something that is of interest to you, but it's not gonna satisfy any requirements here. Um, so you can just kind of scroll through this. You can see that there's that first year seminar requirement listed there. Um, as well as the world language requirement. And then if you keep scrolling down, they'll come across your specific major requirements. So again, in this scenario, the student is pursuing communication design. Yours should say computer science, and then it'll list all the computer science classes moving forward. So it should say CST 231, 238, so on and so forth. Um, and as you complete these classes, they should show up with a green check mark um, to demonstrate that you have satisfied the requirement. Uh, one of the questions was, when do you, we declare a concentration? If you're in the C++ program, um, you want to talk to Mindy about it. Um, usually students won't declare until their junior year. Um, same thing for traditional students. If you want to declare your concentration, you want to email me or you want to talk to me about it so we can create a learning plan that is specific to your concentration. So again, that won't be until your junior or senior year. 
preferably juniors, so we know what classes to recommend for you. So that's Oasis there. Um, any other questions that you have about the system here? Um, again, drop down menu and see that there's a bunch of different options. At the end of the semester, you can always view your grades by selecting grades, it should show up. You can view unofficial transcript, which also shows grades, um, as well as your GPA calculation. So a pretty, pretty handy tool there. Any other questions here? Alrighty, folks, I'm gonna head back into the presentation. All right, so these are some of the important dates that you probably also wanna take a picture of um, just because um, on these days, there's some things that you might want to take action for. Again, July 14th, that is registration for our first year students. Um, again, everyone's gonna have a different time. August 1st, this is when payment is due. So for students that aren't getting financial aid, this is super important because if you don't make payment by this day, you will be dropped from the classes that you registered into. Um, I highly suggest and recommend uh, students to apply for the monthly payment plan with financial aid or at least ask for the monthly payment plan so you don't have to pay for your full tuition, which is usually about two to $3,000. Um, you don't have to pay for that all at once. You can break it up into monthly payments. Um, and so what you wanna do is you wanna connect with financial aid. Um, so again, heading back onto our website, if you go to the search bar in the top right and you type in financial aid, you click on this first link here. And if you scroll down, you can see that they have drop-in counseling, which means that you can click on these links here uh, within those designated times and days and connect with someone and ask them about your financial aid process. Maybe you have some questions about FAFSA or maybe you need to submit some documents. You can connect with someone during their drop-in counseling time, um, or you can also ask them to send you information about the monthly payment plan. That way you don't get dropped from your classes. So again, financial aid in this top box here, and that should, should get you connected to the, to the right folks. Uh, let's see, we have August, whoops, August 10th and the 11th. This is a registration freeze. So for anyone that's trying to make any changes to their schedule, um, you won't be able to make any changes during that time just because that is when financial aid put a freeze on everyone's account because they're trying to figure out what disbursements they need to give out to students or what awards they need to give out to students. So again, if you're trying to make changes in that time, don't panic. Um, there, there is a freeze there. Student move-in day, that's on the 19th and the 20th. Um, that's when all of you or some of you might be coming to campus with your things, family, friends helping you move in. And then the last day to cancel a uh, registration or any type of attendance at CSUMB is August 21st. And then you would wanna email admissions if you aren't able to attend um, CSUMB for fall semester. Classes begin August 22nd, just kind of make note on that. And then our ad drop period is August 29th through September 6th. So only those two weeks within the first two weeks of the semester, can you make any changes to your schedule? Um, so just kind of want you to pay attention to that starting week three and on, it does get very challenging to drop any classes or add any classes. You will need instructor permission to drop or add classes. Um, and usually in order to get it approved, it has to be for a medical reason. So you stating that you have too many units your first semester is not enough, um, right? Or if the material is too hard, it's not enough because you should be attending tutoring. You should be meeting with the TAs um, or go, going to the Cooperative Learning Center for math and writing. Um, so just kind of be cognizant of how many units you're registering into your first semester. And if you do need to drop classes, please connect with me so we can figure out whether it's possible or maybe there's something else that we can do to, to try to alleviate any stressors that you might have. All right, we're getting close to the near end here, but I do want to demonstrate and showcase that these are some of students that have gone through the program here at CSUMB and they have gotten internships with some of these large companies here. 
Um, so you're in a very good program um, that will give you the skills necessary to be successful within the program, but it's gonna be completely up to you on how proactive you are within your experience here with us at CSUMB. If you're just kind of floating by and just kind of coasting through the material and just trying to get by with C's, um, that's probably not enough to be um, competitive and trying to get these internship experiences with these large companies. You want to do more than that. You want to attend the tutoring services. You want to attend any groups or um, CTI programs that we offer here um, in order to be prepared for these large um, in interview processes and just kind of experiences. So definitely be proactive, uh, form the relationships, form the networks, talk to people. That way you can um, finish the program with an internship in hand or maybe a full-time um, opportunity in hand. And then if you have any questions, feel free to email me. This is my email, uh, vanlopez at csumb.edu. Um, and I can definitely help you um, throughout your time here at CSUMB. You can also schedule an advisement appointment with me by calling this phone number. Our, st our student assistant should be able to help you with scheduling that appointment. Um, our appointments are generally only 30 minutes. Again, over summer, it's gonna be all through Zoom. And then I do have walk-ins. So from 8.30 to 11.30, um, and then Thursday, 1.30 to 5 p.m. This is the Zoom ID number um, in case you need to connect with me if you have any brief questions. Um, on July 14th, that is your registration day. So I'm not gonna be taking any um, appointments during that day. It's all gonna be walk-ins. That way you can just kind of drop in and ask me any questions that you might have. If you have any trouble registering, um, that's the time to kind of connect with me and we can figure out any type of solution to whatever problem you have. All right, so if you wanna take a picture of this and then feel free to add any questions into the chat. I'm gonna go ahead and stop recording here. Uh, 